If we want to know about disease in human populations, we have to be able to study human populations. We can do excellent studies in rodents, for example, but even the best such study means that we have to extrapolate from one species to another. And therefore, studies of human beings are critical. Epidemiology plays this role. What is epidemiology? This uh, slide shows you one such definition. It is the study of how disease distributes in human populations and what determines differences in disease risk among different population subgroups. Why does one group of people have a higher risk of disease than another? What can we learn from that? How can that help us to prevent disease? And if we turn to how epidemiology is used, there are many uses of which three are shown here. First, epidemiology helps us to assess the magnitude of the community burden of disease. How much disease and what type of disease is there in our community? Second, epidemiology helps us to identify the cause of human disease, a critical factor if we're going to be able to prevent disease. And finally, epidemiology is used to study the effectiveness of different types of treatments. In this presentation, I'm going to focus on the second use, to identify the causes of human disease, because this is the use that is most prominent in toxic tort cases. Underlying all this is the basic assumption that disease is not randomly distributed in human populations. That is, some people have higher risks of disease than others. And what we want to do is to account for why the risk is higher in some people than another in order to identify factors that can be modified in order to prevent disease. You see here a list of some tongue-in-cheek facts about carrots. Nearly all sick people have eaten carrots. Obviously, the effects are cumulative. An estimated 99.9% .9 of people who die from cancer and heart disease have eaten carrots. 99.9% .9 of people involved in car crashes ate carrots within 60 days of their accidents. 93.1% of juvenile delinquents come from homes where carrots are served regularly. And finally, among people born in 1839 who later ate carrots, there has been a 100% mortality rate. Now, we might chuckle in looking at this list, but it pays to ask, what is the real problem here? And the problem is that we have no comparison group. These data are given without knowing what is the percent of people in the general population who have eaten carrots. And so underlying the questions that epidemiology addresses is the need for comparisons. And I will stress this during this presentation. How does epidemiology and epidemiologists go about their work? We basically have a two-step process as seen here. First, we try to determine whether there is an association between an exposure and a disease or adverse health outcome. If we demonstrate that there is an exposure, we then try to determine whether the observed association reflects a causal relationship of the exposure and the health outcome. I will first focus on the first question to determine whether or not there is an association between an exposure and a disease or adverse health outcome. This is a quotation from the Roman or Greek physician Galen, who was well recognized in his day as being an expert physician. He wrote as follows about the treatments he provided. All who drink of this treatment recover in a short time, except those whom it does not help who all die. It's obvious, therefore, that it fails only in incurable cases. His excellent reputation may have very well been built on the logic implicit in this, because we have here a hypothesis that could not be falsified. There was no way of disproving this. The essence of what we do in science and in epidemiology is to develop hypotheses that we can test and either confirm them or refute them. And this is